All right, guys, welcome back to the Jones Zone. And I'm going to make this uh, a short one. In a previous video, I spoke about the millennial reign and the return of the Lord, Jesus Christ, and how it was very important that Israelites repent for the nine Christ as their uh, Lord and Savior when he died on the cross for their sins. Uh, they stoned his prophets, they stoned him, they spat on him, and they pretty much just turned their backs on him as the Son of God, as he went through hell for them. It's a living hell. Uh, the Romans, they um, completely brutalized this man, gave him the 40 lashes and all of that that would, that would normally kill a man. Uh, but instead of using this term Israelite, um, which is a broad term, I'm just going to say Jews. I know there are Hebrew Israelites who feel like they are the, the true representatives of Israel and all that, but uh, no. Uh, the people who actually played their part in the atrocity committed against Jesus were the ethnic Jews. Okay, So for a lot of people out there, they're saying, well, you know, the, they're uh, the, the race and you know, all this kind of stuff, and um, that blacks are the, the, the originals and all this kind of stuff in the region. In that region, we got to remember this. Whites are depicting themselves doing all of the, the the atrocities and stuff like that. They're actually depicting themselves doing it. And I, the reason why they're doing it is because it really happened that way. All right, so black Israelite people, you are not the ethnic or the ethno-cultural Jews, the descendants of which we see inhabiting Israel today. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't trace your lineage back to the geographical location of Israel at some point in history. So I'm, I'm not saying that. Blacks or Hamitic people were in the Levant and have a presence in those lands dating back to prehistoric times. However, they unfortunately, or rather I should say fortunately, they wouldn't be the ethnic group to inherit the covenant with God. Because it was the Canaanites a mixed Hamitic people who would become the enemies of the Israelites. Uh, Abraham's descendants who are Shemitic okay, or Semitic. And I'm not really trying to get in all of that, but the historical context is also important because if you guys are familiar with some of the content on my channel, it's a lot of it, some of it rather, is historical. But the bottom line is that God, Yahweh, uses nations and people to destroy or conquer other peoples. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he did this with not only Abraham, but with Cyrus, the great, okay, the Persian king who, who he used to conquer the Babylonians. And this is biblical. This is not conjecture. Uh, God also, in my humble opinion, due to historical sources, uh, used Genghis Khan to terrorize Eastern Europe, y'all. When Christianity was taken up, when it was declining, a lot of corruption things going on in the church, uh, you know, in the 11th century, the 10th century. Uh, Genghis Khan, you know, he said similar stuff that Cyrus was saying, but he was much more reckless with it. He was like, I am the wrath of God. You know, he would say that. And Cyrus, he was like, I am the anointed king of God. Or something to that effect. And this is mentioned in Isaiah chapter 45, uh, first verse. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of kings to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. Okay, now having said that, the Jews are going to go through tribulation. And it's not just them. Some Christians will also go through the woes of tribulation because although they have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they're still involved heavily with sin and they're not trying to turn away from these things, even though they have Jesus in the back of their minds. And yes, I believe in the rapture and there is scripture to support that. But in short, what I'll say is that faithful Christians who keep to the commandments and who practice repentance will be raptured before the tribulation. And no one knows exactly what year or, or, or what month that's going to happen. Let me say that again. No one knows the exact time or the year, the month of when the rapture is going to happen. 
So, if you're listening to so-called Christians who are saying things like that, let me just tell you, either these people have anxiety, uh, they are possibly, they could be in the dealings of being a, a false uh, prophet, whether they know it or not, uh, or they could be tormented by demons, okay? That's a, that's a, those are real possibilities. I know you don't want to go there, but, you know, just bring it back to the false prophet narrative. If they're doing that, let's just say, look, false prophets will not be allowed into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. So if you're a Christian and you're doing that, just repent and turn away from it and you'll be fine. Hey, I step over the line sometimes and I wrestle with sin too. And I genuinely have videos on here where you can catch me doing it. But I always make sure to repent. And when I do it, I really mean it. And I come out a wiser person every single time. So yeah, there's a lot of sincerity involved in this. You are most likely going to have to repent and re-repent. Especially if you have not come out from among... Uh, People who are unbelievers and things like that. If you're living among unbelievers, you're living among, let's be honest, phony, fake Christians and things like that. You're and you're exposed to all kinds of, uh, let's just say, sinful content, sinful people. You are going to continue to, very likely continue to do it. Unless you stay in the house all day and isolate yourself from everyone. That's the only way I can see that not happening. Um, and you're not going to, I don't think you're going to go to hell or anything like that. Uh but what's going to happen is you're going to constantly be repenting over and over again. And eventually God is going to chastise you. Now, I'll have to make another video about how that plays out. He'll, he'll chastise you, make you feel real bad about what you're doing and all that kind of stuff. All right. Now, when it comes to the Jews, God will not restore favor to them until they repent and confess that Jesus is not only their Messiah, but their Lord and Savior. And boy, oh boy, do they have to mean it too. No, you're not just going to be welcome to the kingdom walking around just thinking Christ is your Messiah. While everybody else is kneeling and all that, and because you're Jewish, you know, you can just walk, walk amongst Christ and not kneel. It don't work that way. In Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Okay, now it says every knee should bow. Every tongue should confess. And that means that there's choice. That means that if Jesus comes before you, that's what you should do. It doesn't mean that's what you have to do. Okay, that's saying that Jesus is not going to impose his will on you. But it would be wise, very wise of you to bow before Jesus Christ. Because if you don't, well, then you're going to have to deal with the repercussions of not bowing before the Lord and Savior. Not bowing before the Son of God who died for your sins. And you know, I'm not going to get into that anymore about what happens if you don't do that and, and what you could be looking at. But most people, they pretty much get the picture of what happens to you if you do not bow before the Lord and Savior. All right, so that's going to conclude this uh, and uh, wrap this up, guys. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, you all stay blessed.